Politico called it the three-hour debate from hell. New York's Daily News ripped the clown news network. Boy, that is pretty harsh because CNN's Jack Tapper did exactly what he said he would do in this messy marathon. Constantly push and prod and poke the candidates to take each other on. You've dismissed him as an entertainer. Would you feel comfortable with Donald Trump's finger on the nuclear codes? Governor Bush said, Governor Bush told me last week when I read him the quote from Governor Jindal that he agrees you're not a serious candidate. Tell Donald Trump why his ideas on taxes are wrong. You're a pediatric neurosurgeon. Should Mr. Trump stop saying this? Andrew McCarron, CNN's whole approach of let's round up all the bad things the candidates said to each other, throw it out there and make them go at it. Did that work? Well, 23 million people watched it, so I guess it worked to some extent, but it felt less like a debate and more like reality television. And I'm not sure that best serves the American people. They care about jobs, the economy, terrorism, health care, what we're going to do to help our veterans. I don't think by goading these candidates into schoolyard bullying necessarily helped the people understand where they uh, where they stand in terms of policy. Some of the exchanges were substantive. A lot of it was he said he didn't like your face kind of thing. Right. But it's a very different style than Fox News That's used right. when Megyn Kelly and Brett Baer and Chris Wallace pressed the candidates with very detailed questions and if they mixed it up, fine, but it wasn't, you know, he said mm -hmm. this about you. So, your thoughts? Well, I, I love to make this comparison. It's a Fox News debate was like Catholic school, so you know it's very routine. It's 9 to 9.30 math, 9.30 to 10 English, but then you go to the CNN debate and it was like Montessori school. It was. Unstructured, <laughs> How do you feel? Let's talk about personalities. You know, it, it was such a different approach. I think both have benefits, though. And the most wo used word of the night was Jake, Jake, Jake. It <laughs> right. should not have been. Well, that raises a, a related question here. But before I get to that, uh, one of the entertaining, entertaining aspects of this debate, if we can put it up while we're talking, is the many faces of Donald Trump. <laughs> this guy who had all these great reaction shots. Um, but to the extent to which CNN didn't use a bell to tell the candidates you're out of time, in the segment, and so he, uh, Tapper had to keep cutting them off, and then there was Jake, 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 and people interrupted. Did, did it seem to you to kind of veer out of control at times? You know, no, it definitely got out of control, but I think, again, Jake Tapper did exactly what he said he was going to do, mix it up, let, let the candidates have it out. I think the, the problem with that were twofold. One, they went after, and it was set up this way by CNN, for them to go after each other, so Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama suffered almost no blows at all That's during right. the entire debate because of the way it was structured. Um, and, then, and then the other one was they didn't get to economy and economic issues, some of the issues that I agree voters would have been interested in because they hadn't been beating up each other on the economy and, and right. those issues. And Joe, the they also didn't get very much to Mike Huckabee uh, and Scott Walker uh, right. and Rubio getting as few as two or three substantive questions and therefore having to try to bust in. Uh, look, the front runners always get more time, but this seemed. But also, if you exact. hadn't said anything bad about anybody, there was oh. there was no reason to go a to ask you a question. Interesting. <laughs> right. Let exactly. me ask you about you know there were three moderators, although Jake Tapper asked the lion's share of the questions. There was also Dana Bash, the uh, chief political correspondent for CNN, and radio host Hugh Hewitt, who earlier had gotten into a Donald Trump during a radio interview on his show. Then there was this moment. Uh, let's play it for the viewers. And he said today that Donald Trump is maybe the best interview there is anywhere that he's ever done. Now, unless he was just saying that on CNN to be nice, but he did say that. Oh, uh, you're the best statement? interview in America. And we had a legitimate misunderstanding in terms of his pronunciation of a word. What'd you make of that? Well, I think we may see a kinder, gentler Donald Trump in the days ahead. If you no think way. about how gracious he was <laughs> in the spin room. Well, what do you make about Hugh, 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 Hugh Hewitt was just kind of smiling at him? <laughs> Well, there's everybody has a crush on Trump to a certain extent. I mean, you know, there's a conservative Including radio. Guys? Well, the conservative <laughs> okay, radio host. It. He is the best the interview in America. Exactly. That's why the he's on so many radio shows. Host, and, uh, and you watch even like Chris Cuomo, any of these television, and if they all, when they're interviewing Trump, there's a sense of like this, just fascinated by what he's saying, and they can't well, believe what he's saying. Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving That's to right. media. That's right. Who are Which we is kidding? why all these shows <laughs> let him phone in. No other candidate gets that privilege. I wish it had been a little That's fact it. checking in the scene. And debate. So, for example, when Jeb Bush, who hasn't gotten very much buzz out of this debate, even though he challenged Trump, when he talked about uh, Trump and his people pushing for a Florida casino project, and Trump mm -hmm. said that's totally false, well, Trump's people did push for a Florida casino project, but we didn't learn that during the debate. Last thought. I mean, that's always going to happen yeah. in debates where you get deflect, you try to deflect it off. And then, then there is, that's where the press does come in, in the coverage of who 
who is factually so right does, about uh, that does exchange. Joe Trippi have a, a crush on Trump because he said he is the I best interviewer in America? Mildly, mildly, I think mildly, I think Joe has a, tr has a crush on him. <laughs> no, I, well, I would like to see Trump get the nomination. I, I will. bet you uh, a Democrat. All right, got to go. <laughs> Joe Trippi, Mercedes Schlapp, Andrea McCarron, thanks very much for joining us. Ahead with Pope Francis about to visit the United States, will the media love fest surrounding the pontiff reach a whole new level? But up next, Hillary Clinton yucks it up on The Tonight Show. Will that help her bury the email mess?